Okay. I know I said that I was going to do the um, all five episodes of part two in my review for um, Batman Cape Crusade. I already did episode one to five, or, or a brief run now on that. But I had to come and talk about episode six because I honestly cannot find a single thing I don't like about this episode. It's really that good. It's really, really that good. I did, in regards to this, I go through exactly what happens in this episode. So if the episode starts off with um, these, these, two, uh, um, these two guards of uh, our truck driving through a part of Gotham City that is now, you know, the slums and whatnot. And the lady's talking about how, you know, her father used to work there and stuff and how things are now and stuff. And all of a sudden, they see a, a, a figure riding a horse, a kind of ghostly figure riding a horse coming at them, right? And it turns out that it's Jim Craddock. He crashes the 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 um the the the, 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 the truck. She crawls out there and stuff. And you know, it's it, it's actually pretty freaking creepy because um yeah, she sees him there, and I say it's it's gent it's the gentleman ghost Jim Craddock. No. You see in this, you're thinking, well, okay, somebody's wearing some kind of Halloween mask get up kind of thing because that's what goes on when it comes to this. Right? If you have the opening for, for, for it here and all of that, okay. Let me see Bruce Wayne reading the Gotham Gazette with down talking about gentlemen, ghosts, grabs, charity, loot, and all of this stuff there. He's with Lucius Fox, then going over his portfolio. He's still very, very rich. You understand me? And um, Lucius and uh, Lucius and Alfred are talking, and you know they have a little, they have a little um, talk about um, how um, how Alfred's how Alfred's great uncle used to see a ghost and all kind of thing. And the, the interaction between them is really good. You understand me? And then you know Lucius even says to Bruce that you know um, he was raised to always treat the help with respect, and that one kind of resonates because. During the first five episodes of this, Bruce Wayne was very detached when it came to Alfred. He was basically like, you know, um, get this done. Um, um, he doesn't want to talk about his feelings or all that stuff. He was keeping him at arm's length. And what Lucius Fox said there actually kind of resonated with him. And, and, and it will come back later on in the episode because it really does work out that way. So... Um, Lucius informs him that he just bought a property and he wants to um, build some houses and stuff on it there and, and all of that. Okay, no problem. That was the workout with getting it done. Harvey Dent is running for mayor and he isn't doing very well. The current mayor ran some stuff in the papers talking about how oh, he's just some kind of mama's boy and all of this stuff. And you know, Dent has always been from from the beginning of this thing that Dent has always been very cocky, and you know he wants to he wants to be mayor. But these these things that the mayor is doing, these headlights are, are are hurting his campaign chances, and he's really upset about that, and he needs to get it done. So he goes out to his car and meets Rupert Thorne, and Thorne tells him that you know um he's hemorrhaging money and he's willing to help him, but he tells him that you know um. Aren't you backing the mayor? And Thorne tells him he would rather back both of them because either way he's going to come out on top. And this is this is really classic Rupert Thorne. I mean, people tend to get more caught up in the Falcons and the Moronis because they tend to be used more proficiently as mom characters. But the thing about Rupert Thorne is Rupert Thorne is known as the godfather of Gotham City. And you don't get that kind of title with out being able to pull strings and get shit done. If they, I don't know, if this series really does uh, well, the, uh, how good Rupert Thorne is as a character, because if, you, if you've if read Batman comics and stuff, you know Rupert Thorne, when he pops up, things do tend to be, uh, you know, get kind of sticky. Yes he's, a, yes, he's a criminal, he will do stuff like that, you know, but he's more the manipulative type. He will have a mayor, a commissioner, a, a senator, and all this other stuff 
in his pocket just to get things done. He will appoint people to positions and manipulate situations to advance them just to make everything better for him. That's the kind of character Rupert Thorne is. And his interaction with Harvey here is actually really good because you get to realize just how much of a manipulative bastard he really is. He is willing to back both mayoral candidates to advance himself because keep in mind, he is in this for himself and himself alone. That's all he cares about. And like I said, this was really good also. Getting to see how he come there and try to tempt um, um, Harvey and you know, and then Harvey, to, uh, Harvey, Harvey basically tells him, you know, he doesn't want to do anything with him, but then he kind of leaves and tells him, you know, um, he'll expect that he will expect a response from him, sort of stuff. Letting him know, you know, he, he knows certain things about him that Harvey hasn't, hasn't let anybody else know. You understand? I mean, that's, that's classic Rupert Sean. That's what he does. That is what he does. So Batman is looking in to these robberies from the gentleman ghost and he, he thinks himself that you know um maybe instead of looking at at um you know um the needy robbery himself he should look at what's being hit because the armored car that he went that that that, that the um that the gentleman ghost went after there were there were like four other armored cars out there that night but he chose specifically the one that was carrying charity funds so he figures he needs to look into this and the good, the other good thing about this episode is that Batman actually has to do some investigative work here. It's not just being dropped in his lap. He has to actually do some investigative work here and actually go outside of his comfort zone to get things done. So that's really impressive as well. Avi Dent is taking the train to try and he brings reporters to try and show them that you know, um, He's with the people and, and, he, and he wants to help them. And, and once he's elected mayor, the trains will run on time. They'll be cleaner. They'll be better maintained. Everything. And, and as you can see, the people aren't buying his crap because they're like stuff. But gentleman goes, shows up on the tracks alongside the train and then ends up in the train and decides he starts robbing people. Right? Literally starts robbing people. Harvey wants to, Harvey goes to him and tells him, you know, okay, take my money and leave these people alone. But he tells him he will never, he will never take from an upstanding man like him. But he, but he then proceeds to rob the poor man. That's what he's doing. You understand me? Then he escapes, right? While he's going there, Batman is chasing him with only street and all that. And then he literally runs through a wall. So you're thinking to yourself, that this has to be some kind of projection. Some kind of something you had to be doing, some some kind of thing, maybe the wall or some kind of um, secret panel or something, but Batman checks it's just a wall. He needs to find out what's going on. So he checks the, checks the money or something that, that, that I was burning and finds residue or something on it, but he won't believe that gentleman ghost Jim Credding is actually a ghost. He doesn't want to believe that. He's thinking this has to be some kind of trick or something but he did get a look at this coat of arms that was on his satchel so he needs to get information about that right meanwhile lucius fox goes out to the estate that he wants to buy you understand me um the, the, the caretakers they're telling him that you know this estate has been in his family for years but um you know he can't keep up with it anymore taxes will send a man to the poor house so he needs to sell and all of that, they go inside, and the the the, the coat of arms that um, he has is on the house itself, so it's connected. Meanwhile, Bruce is in the library trying to get some information on it. Looking up, he meets a librarian who he knew from when he was younger. She used to go there with his mother all the time and stuff. And um, he asks her about the crest. Is he trying to find something? But then she tells him that he won't find that there because that is the crest of the Craddock family. And apparently Jim Craddock was a nobleman who lived in Gotham years ago, but, but, but he was also had a notorious gambler and pretty much wasted all his money gambling, right? But he also believed that, you know, that because he was a nobleman, he was entitled to everything that he should be allowed to take 
from the from people who were lesser than him, who were lower in standard in standing than him then. And you know, all these Bill of Rights and all kind of thing, he didn't like it at all. He wanted to just he believed that England, you know, he should be allowed to take anything from anybody that he wanted. So what did he do? When he lost his money, he basically became a highwayman, a, 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 but he wasn't, he wasn't any kind of Robin Hood. He literally robbed from the, from the poor and gave to himself. That was the thing. He didn't rob from the rich at all. He literally robbed from poor people because he believed that, you know, he should be allowed to take from them. That was it. He should be allowed to take from these people. When they eventually caught him, they got him, they hung his ass and that was the end of that. So Bruce goes out, now he realizes that um, that um, Lucius Fox is, is gone to where this place is, so he needs to get there fast as possible. While they're looking to sign over the documents and stuff and all of that, in comes Jim Craddock. He literally emerges from a painting. You understand me? And he wants to, he, he, he's upset that they're selling the property because he believes that, you know, it should, it should remain there and, and that what should happen. Batman shows up, tries to fight him, punches straight through his head and it, and it just freezes, his hand just freezes. You understand me? Then he disappears. So he goes back to the cave there now and he has to um, get some hot water to try and melt the ice and he now has to actually come to the realization that, you know, this is most likely a ghost that he's fighting. He isn't fighting some man in a math or that this is something supernatural. And this was another thing that I really liked about the episode because Batman now has to step outside of his comfort zone. This is a, this is a, this is a totally different entity from just the normal run on the mill crooks. He ha he now has to find a way to deal with this with this enemy on a supernatural level. Yeah, that's what I mean. He needs to deal with, and this is this this Anthony, this is what was missing from my adventures with Superman. Well, several things were missing from that, but this is one of the things we're missing from it. Because when you just limit everything to hey, it's Kryptonian tech, this is Kryptonian tech, that's Kryptonian tech, this is Kryptonian tech, you rob the chance for these heroes to evolve. Silver Banshee should have been an actual Banshee. Atomic Skull should have been an actual Atomic Skull. You understand me? Life Wire should have been an actual electric woman. These are the things that bring these... The, the, when, you, when you have uniqueness in, in, in these villains, it helps the hero have to move out of what they're accustomed to think of what you have to do and get things done people tend to believe that superman is just is just as brute who just goes out there and throws punches but he's actually very very smart but they never give a chance for him to grow and explore that and this was done very well in this episode because now batman realizes he's not dealing with just some guy in a mask he's dealing with an actual ghost and he needs to find a way to stop this entity so alfred tells him that you know he may need to go and see somebody and he goes and sees Linton Midnight, who actually comes from Vertigo, line of vessel and that stuff there. He goes and sees him and um, Midnight tells him that, you know, um, well, he kind of knew he was coming. But Midnight tells him that, that, that um, he's dealing with a, with a supernatural entity in Jim Craddock. And the only way that he could deal, the way that he could actually defeat him is that he needs to get the original deed for the house and also the blood of a nobleman and perform a ritual to banish Cranic spirit. But Batman wants to know why would a ghost be robbing from people? And Midnight tells him that, you know, every entity has their own thing that traps them here. Cranic was a thief and a scoundrel in his life. And he, at even in debt, he, he believes that, you know, he, he is entitled to rob from the poor and give it to himself. So that, 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 that was basically binding his spirit here and now, and that's why he's carrying this out. He also gives him a, a vial and, and tells him, you know, he will know what to do with it when the time comes. So Bruce gets the deed. But now he needs to get the blood of a nobleman. And that's when Alfred tells him that, you know, um, 
the Pennywood, um, Pennywood um, line of family that actually has noble blood in them. And Bruce is like, I didn't know that and he tells him because you never asked. So again, these are important parts because you're realizing that, that you know, Bruce has neglected learning important things about Alfred because he's just been focused squarely on being Batman and stuff and bad guys. Not really realizing that, you know, the most important person to him has always been there helping him all this thing. So they go there, perform the ritual, um, Alfred groups his blood on it and stuff. And when they go to burn the deed, you understand me? That's when Craddock shows up and starts to beat the crap out of Batman, right? Uh, Alfred starts to burn, Alfred uh, starts to burn the deed, which causes Craddock's ghostly form to fall away. When that happens, now he turns into a cloud and decides to try and possess Batman, but Alfred jumps in the way. And again, really good part because you realize that Alfred is here and he will do whatever it takes to protect Bruce. You understand? He loves him as a son and he will do everything to protect him. Really good that here. When that happens, now he gets possessed and tries to kill Batman. But even when he's doing that, he's telling him that the telling him that you know Alfred is fighting him on the inside to stop him. He 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 doesn't want him to he doesn't want Craddock to learn anything in his mind. He's blocking him from learning who Batman really is. Plus, he's fighting him to regain control of his body. When he tries to attack him and then Alfred gets back control, he actually tells Bruce to kill him before he kills him. And then Bruce actually says, never. And that's when you realize how important Batman realizes that Alfred is. This is really the first time you actually see him showing that. You understand me? They burn the rest of it. He comes out and then... Batman ends up trapping him in the vial that Midnight gave him. When Alfred regains consciousness now, um, Batman, to, Batman literally tells him, you know, you fool, why would you do that? I can't do this without you. And it's a really heartwarming moment for him to realize, you know, he cares this much about Alfred as well. Again, Important part. So, just in this one episode so far, we have had Batman having to do actual investigative work, going outside of his of his comfort zone to deal with an actual spiritual entity. Him actually having to realize things, and you know, he has he has not been paying much uh, as much attention to Alfred as he really should. Alfred willingly risking his life to protect Bruce, and then Bruce. Slash Batman realizing that you know actually coming out and admitting he can't do this without Alfred because he cares about him this much. He really does care about him and he needs that. So when they don't know, midnight shows up, Batman gives him the vial with um Craddock essence in it, and Craddock is literally screaming, No, don't leave me with this man, you don't know what he's gonna do to me. Uh, when when um when Batman asks Miss Knight what is what exactly is he going to do with them, he tells him, "You probably don't want to know." And he says, "Yeah, I probably don't." And he leaves. Meanwhile, though, Harvey, after that stunt on the train, his last backers have backed out from him, so his war chest to actually run for mayor is empty. He has no more money to back anything. So he tells him to get out and then he calls Rupert's son and tells him that you know he's willing to make a deal. I'm telling you, I don't have a single bad thing to say about this episode. I thought it was executed very well. If the entire 10 episodes were like this, I would literally have nothing bad to say about it. Honestly, honestly, I really do like this episode. I really do like it. And I, I'm missing this on the episode itself. And again, I said the, the animation style is a little clunky, but I actually like the way everything played out here. I'm, and I'm just telling you, for this episode alone, you understand me? Batman Cape Crusader Season 1, Episode 6. I am giving this episode a 5. I know it's shocking, but based on the episode, based on what I've seen so far and the way this episode played out, 
I'm giving it a five because I really like the way this episode was done. Everything was structured really well. Everything played out good. And this is the way you do it. You understand me? You have the entire episode like 25 minutes. You know, see, so you take away the, the intro and the DX and all that stuff. Basically, it was about 23 minutes. Okay. You can do a lot in 23 minutes. You can do really well. And this episode proves it. Done extremely well. Yeah, I'm telling you, if the rest of the episodes are like this, really good. But this episode alone may have just saved this entire series, in my, in my opinion, honestly. But we shall wait and see. You know your thoughts on this in the comments. Have a different opinion. I'd love to hear it. If you like, be sure to hit that thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. Ring the notification bell to be notified every time I put out a new video. And I shall see you all next time. Take care.